everybody. Welcome to the training, learning, and development community. Thanks for joining us for another broadcast. Oh God, we got four this week. And so here we are on number three with Mike Peacock of Aristocrat. And what are we talking about today? We're talking about file organization and workflow, um, specific to like um, to, to digital operations. And um, I'm really excited to be able to talk with Mike about this. Mike is somebody who works with um, Christiana, who is in chat right now. And, um, and kind of looking at Mike's background, he's got a whole lot going on, especially on the media side, which I am fascinated by this stuff. And I know that just any time that I've taken on a project, um, done anything at all, like where you're kind of doing some management of um, or producing like some e-learning, anything like that, you really need to have a good sort of um, infrastructure of how you're um, creating everything so that you can be a lot more efficient. You can be, um, you can be faster what you do. You can, you know, grab the content that you need. And just even on my day to day stuff, I am <laughs> always challenged about like, how do I get everything off my GoPro from this last weekend at the zoo and, and where do I put it and name it and all that stuff. And so I'm really looking forward to talking to Mike about that today. Um, let me just give a shout out to everybody that is already in Susan, Dan, Rick, Christiana, David, Jack, hey, and Joe's in, Cheryl, nice to see you, Ray, Megan, Sonna Lynn, Shannon, Duncan, Gina, Nicole, thanks for, thanks for joining us today. All right, so Mike, we could probably just geek out for three hours if we had to talk about media and guitars and, <laughs> and pro audio and things like that. <laughs> um, but why don't you give us a little bit of your background? Um, you know, just uh, got a little bit that last uh, broadcast with with Christiana talking about um, your LMS. But tell us a little bit more about yourself. Sure. Uh, well, thanks for being here. Hi, morning, everybody, or afternoon. No, it's still morning, I think. Um, I am a senior instructional designer over at Aristocrat Technologies. We are a manufacturer of slot machines here in Las Vegas. Uh, I've been there for just over two years uh, doing all things media and AR. Um, a little bit about my background. I've been in education for about 20 years, so I understand the transition from education into instructional design. Uh, I'm a professional audio engineer and video editor, uh, so I understand media file uh, organization, uh, which I would, can't wait to get into today, and please throw your questions in there. Um, a professional guitar player, songwriter, I don't know, just overall general joker. Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Overall joker. Yeah, no, I I I I I took like a semester of um, of audio when I was in going to a community college, and so I have kind of like a basic background in that. But then, um, you know, Mike and I share definitely share a common interest in the guitar and songwriting and just you know music and performance. He used to be a music teacher. Um, way back in the day in Massachusetts. Um, also used to work at a music store. So this is a definitely a different kind of animal that you're talking to today in, in Mike Peacock. <laughs> um, people that work at music stores, I always like, you know, I'm sort of like, wow, you used to work at a music store. Ooh. <laughs> so, um, so I know that you're going to geek out with us today on talking about um, um, just file oh, organization yeah. and, and, and just workflow. So um, let's just get into it. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, so, do you have a project that you're working on right now? I have many projects I'm working on right now, um, yeah. both for work and personal, um, mm -hmm. which are both all media, um, whether it's doing video stuff in Premiere or mixing stuff in Pro Tools uh, for, for music and stuff. Um, so I'm using multiple platforms. Uh, I use both a Mac and a PC. Uh, I 80, 20 Mac, uh, you know, I'm a Mac guy. So my Mac yeah. people out there, awesome. Um, yeah. So um, a lot of projects going on at, at one time, and it's it's a challenge sometimes to keep them all straight and remember where this file was, and also for collaboration. So sending files to the clients or to the SME for their input, they may be recording something where I'm going to go back and mix it. Uh, so file management is extremely important with all these projects going on. Totally. And I want to tell you, you folks in chat, 
Um, this is a really, this is a great time to ask if you've got any questions at all about pro audio or pro video. Um, you probably don't talk to people like Mike on a, on a daily basis, or if you do, you're pretty lucky, but, um, feel free to post questions in, in chat or in the ask a question section. And let's try to stump them and see, uh, and see <laughs> exactly how much he knows. Oh, God. <laughs> so do you have like, a primary <laughs> e-learning tool that you like to use like an authoring tool? Uh, for authoring tools, I do. I mean, uh, uh, Articulate 360 is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, for the for the platform itself, is just uh, amazing what you can do with it and uh, and elaborate with it. Uh, then I'll dive into like Beyond um, mm -hmm. and do videos there. I'll do my voiceovers in either Pro Tools, Logic, Audition um, because it goes really well with Premiere. So I have this really nice, interesting workflow of of materials. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's hear about it. Let's see. Say, um, most recent project starting out. What do you got? All right. So let's see. Most recent project. Um, we'll do a video project. And so the first thing is, uh, you know, understand kind of like storyboard it. Uh, just like you would any other project out there. You need to know. All right. What am I doing? What's the purpose of the project? What is? Uh, who will I be meeting with? What equipment will I need? Uh, whether it's hardware or software. Uh, I'm a big fan of using as much as I can to get the get it done. I try not to do everything in one platform. Mm. Uh, so if it needs, you know, a background, cool. I'm going to go over beyond or go or, or somewhere else or even PowerPoint to design it, and then I'll throw it over here and I'll go over here. And so I'm a big fan of moving around a lot. Uh, but with the uh, storyboard, just like anything else, um, and then getting into it, what. Uh, going in and kind of producing the shot. So if I'm working with uh, doing a video shot, whether it's a knowledge transfer or just someone explaining something, I'm still producing it. I'm still telling them what to do, what to say. Can you say that again? Um, now with video, I'm always making sure people have their masks on. Uh, so, you know, so when we watch the video back, if they don't have, they're not going to get in trouble. Um, yeah. For that one time that they, you know, sneezed or something and then put it down their chin, like, oh, yeah. Could you please put the mask back on? Yeah, so you're always man. producing. You're always producing. And then I'll take the files back, put them on the computer, and that's where the the important part starts is the naming everything, file management of getting the files down, creating that first folder. What is this? Uh, so I'll give it a really good name that I know, and I usually put the date on it. Um, okay. Then I'll put, a, put the files in there. I do a lot of subfolders, raw footage, but I'll name everything that's on the footage. Um, and one key thing that I really, really learned years ago was to, in, in the folder, put a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet and write down everything that's on there. Uh, okay. So day, this date, uh, I got the files, I edited everything, any notes that I may have, like, oh, the third take of this was really good. Okay, uh, so that, that's a great yeah. tip. So is that's so you like have a basically some kind of a document in the primary folder that just yes. kind of logs everything that you've got going? Yes, because in the moment I'm not, actually I speak into the camera a lot or the microphone. When I'm doing film uh, footage, they'll do something and I'll, I'll be right in the background in the microphone going, all right, that was really good, let's, uh, let's use that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I play it back, I remember, oh, I want that spot right there. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I do, I, I put a Word document in there and I just make notes to myself, like this was good, this needs to change, all right, I'm looking for this now. Uh, so every time I go back in, I, I know where I was. Because as you know, going from project to project to project, you come back to it and you're like, what was I doing? I have no idea. Or the project's brought back six months later and you have to make changes to it and you're like, I have no idea my thought process that I was going on when I was doing wow. this. Wow. So you keep it so you keep it local to um to just write in your machine. Correct. Correct. Now um just backing up a little bit when you're storyboarding, is that something that you specifically do or is that somebody else on your team does? I do it. Um, I, I like to do it for, for my project. Um, mm -hmm. And if I'm working with somebody else, I'll storyboard their project. Because uh, sometimes it's I want them to see, like, right, this is how this is how I work. Uh, maybe it'll inspire them to be more, you know, maybe more organized when they do it by themselves or something. Uh, but mm -hmm. I'm always storyboarding, taking notes. Um, 
and uh, just making sure everything is, you know, I don't like surprises. And uh, being in the being in the in, you know instructional design world, we always get surprises. Um, right. Or in the audio, video, media world, whatever you want to call it, we're always getting surprises. So any particular I try to, tool that you favor for storyboarding? I actually use paper. Um, yeah. I, I actually it's a I, I buy uh, desk calendars. And I flip them over, and I use the big piece, and I just storyboard all over it because um, I don't have a big giant whiteboard, which I used to use. And uh, but I storyboard on a on the back of a desk calendar. Wow! I know, it's, I know it's the digital world, and I I love digital, but I'm still a paper person. Um, and that's how I, I I know I could buy a big post-it and everything, but I really like the back of a calendar. I don't know why. It's what I do. That's great. And I only can write in pencil. I don't yeah. know why, because it's not permanent. In my mind, if I write it in pen, then it's permanent. So I use a pencil, and then I do corrections in pen, and I have different color pens. And so by the end, it's it's hieroglyphics. That's fantastic. Do you, do, like, draw boxes and stuff on the – Boxes yeah. and arrows, and this is going over here. And and uh, I never I never erase. I just cross out. That is an, uh, that's a great – Because tip. sometimes that idea just didn't work right at that moment. But it's still there, so I can still see the thought process of that idea. If I if I erase it, it's gone. Uh, nice. So I just cross out, and then like, oh, that, that was that wasn't a bad idea. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I was onto something there. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, that's awesome. All right, so now you you've got um, you got your storyboard, you've got you, like your 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 main directory going, and then you've, you're creating subdirectories. Can you give me just an example of like the kinds of sub subdirectories that you create? Um, I'll create subdirectories uh, on like the raw footage, and then if I start using footage, I'll move that over and rename it. Everything has to be named. I'm in the thought process of collaboration. So if I was working on a project and I gave it to you, I need you to understand every file that is in there, yeah. not just uh, you know. Uh, Audio one, what the heck? What's that? Yeah. Um, you know, take six. Christian. Yeah. Right. Um, and I remember being on a mixing project. So in the studio, sometimes you're the recording engineer, which sets up all the mics, or the mixer. So I was the mixer, and uh, so I came in. I got the file from the uh, recording engineer, and there was 108 tracks on it, and there was a lot of subtakes in it, but everything was labeled. Vocal one, vocal two. Vo it took me one week of 10 hour days to go through and actually, what is this? What are we using? There was no notes. There was no, oh, use take four. There yeah. was none of that. So that's just, especially when you have a deadline, you really don't want to, you know, waste a week going through files, trying to figure out what, what is this? Um, yeah. Yeah. So naming everything, taking a couple minutes and just naming everything. Um, and I'll usually name it the project. I'll use, I'll, usually name um, takes on there as well. But again, all this goes into my notes um, that I'm writing. So take four was great. Take three, uh, I like the picture on at two minutes. Um, so I'm always writing notes of where things are so I don't have to remember it. Yeah, that, yeah, that no, that's happen. great. And and I, I kind of just want to emphasize, um, you know, just sort of coming up, I have, I have worked with people that, you know, that don't have backgrounds like, with media or just sort of self-taught and seeing sort of how they organize themselves versus somebody like, Oh my gosh, like, you know, a few years ago I did a CD and I was lucky enough to work with this producer that um, was just, who has done incredible, incredible like things as far as music is concerned. He used to work with Hans Zimmer and, and, and all this. Nice. And when I looked at his pro tools setup and the way that he organized himself, it was ridiculous. It was like a work of art to see the way that he organized himself and even the way that Pro Tools, when, when you opened up one of his projects, how it looked, it was like breathtaking versus, you know, the folks that, that I know that might have taken like a community college class like me and sort of like, eh, you know, rename it here and sort of you don't understand yeah, exactly. what's going on. So it is, you make, you make this stuff like if, if you get this stuff going early on, like making sure that it's, it's named efficiently and, and correctly, it just makes a huge difference in the long run if you get in the habit of it. Oh, absolutely. And one other, uh, another tip is to, we, we, we all know what tools we use for like say audio recording or even, um, uh, cam even Camtasia. 
Um, Audacity and Camtasia, most people out there probably use that. Um, what I learned over the years is to create templates, is to create an Audacity template that is already set up, um, that I have written down my settings, because I know what my voice is gonna sound like. I know how to mix my voice. I have settings already saved. So if you know you're doing a lot of vocal work with your microphone, go in and you know your settings, just write them down. You can't save them in Audacity, but every time you go in, everything's already, you set it up and you're just ready to go every time. So when I go into a studio, I already have like, you know, if I'm doing a voiceover, I already have all the tracks set up. I have all the effects on it because it's just a template. Uh, same thing I do with video. I, I know how my layout should be. Um, so I just go in and everything is already right there. So templates will save you a ton of time and all your settings are already saved. Nice. Okay. So, um, so just real quick, back to the subdirectory question about, yeah. um, sort of typical folders that you might, you might organize things into. Do you have like, you know, something that maybe you consistently say, okay, I'm going to need this group first. Like, you know, you said raw footage and what else? Oh, raw footage, um, any audio that I recorded um, mm -hmm. externally um, off the camera. Um, I will put in my, my big giant storyboard. I usually tend to scan it and I'll put that in digitally. Uh, so then I can write on it in Adobe or something. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I always have that out and about, uh, which is always good. Um, any kind of, also I, I like to save in the file any correspondence, any emails. So mm -hmm. I'll save the emails in the folder. I know I can find them in, in the email, but I'm right there in the folder. I'm right there in the moment. What did he say about his vocals or, or he wanted this shot? I can just click on it and it's right there. Uh, nice. So I like, I like to have a subfolder of just uh, email correspondence back and forth. Excellent. Okay, cool. Yeah. Saves me time. Yeah. Yeah. And so you have that on there. Now you're talking originally about, you, you know, you sort of look at all of this through the lens of collaboration. Right. with whoever the maybe the SMEs or project managers or product owners. And um, where do you, you know, do you sh thinking of it in terms of collaboration? Is there, do you have like, like, how do you share it when it comes down to it? Like say you're updating the project or you want people to check it out or, or whatever. How do you, how do you get to that point? Uh, I say, well, first of all, I save it in many places. Um, yeah. I, I, if it's not saved in three places, it's not saved. Because uh, remember, think about your last project you worked on. Think about how many hours, days it took. Would you like to redo it? So I save it on my computer. It's saved there. It's saved on a hard drive. It's saved in the cloud somewhere. I use Dropbox, but Google or, or anything like that is fine, okay. whatever. Um, I just like Dropbox. At work, we use OneDrive. Uh, so I'll save things up there. And now when I want to share with, say, stakeholders or the client, um, I'll use, uh, we use OneDrive at work. And so I will put just the necessary files that they need into that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I won't give them the whole file. I won't give them the whole everything because they don't need to see all the raw everything and mistakes and email correspondence and everything. So I will put the the file that they need to see whether it's something bounced down or exported or maybe they want to see you know all the different sections of it um, but I'll, all all I do is what they need and that way we have that folder we can share back and forth um, in my personal life I use Dropbox uh, a lot same kind of concept I'll create a folder for for like you and I and then we can just drop things in it share it drop it back um, back and forth I started using Adobe Cloud a little bit uh, mm -hmm. with my uh, which has been really, really great uh, moving from, especially from device to device. I'll start on a Windows and then I'll move over yeah. to the Mac. And it's so much easier just to I drag know. and drop it. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of that myself. I'm like, oh, this is too convenient. Like, <laughs> I could just drop my I stuff know. in Adobe. <laughs> I know. Now, yeah, like Megan is saying here, um, I save all emails around a project to the project folder as well, a game changer, and everything is in the same spot. So, yeah, yeah that's that, that's such a great idea. Um, you can probably just drag and drop it in there, right? Yep, yep. No, you open it up, and you can either save it and drag and drop it. But at, least, at least it's right there. Um, yeah. And I, I know it's over there. Uh, but I do, like, I, I, just, I do like hard drives over the cloud just mm -hmm. for the mere fact it's faster. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're doing a 36 gigabyte file, it mm -hmm. takes forever to put it into the cloud mm -hmm. where it'll take 10 minutes to put it over to a hard drive. 
Yeah. Uh, so I, I use I use the cloud for backup backups, um, nice. where I'm really backing everything up to a to a hard drive. Okay, so let's yeah. let's hear about the workflow. Like, okay, so you've put together your project, you've got you know sort of your files, and you have your first draft going. Now you need to share it to whoever your stakeholders. Sure. What do you do to um to to accomplish that? Uh, I will, uh, let's say this video or something, uh, I will bounce it down, uh, mm -hmm. export it out, and I will create it very similar to a final result. Like, all right, I'm going to put, my workflow is I love Premiere Pro because I have all the bells and whistles of Premiere and Audition within one. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I throw it over into Camtasia uh, for the arrows, the circles, the boxes, the call outs, because it's just oh. so much easier. Okay. I could mix the whole thing in Camtasia, but it just doesn't have all the bells and whistles I'm used to in Premiere. That's all. Uh, I love Camtasia. Um, and then I'll throw it in Camtasia, put background music or whatever, and the arrows. And then I'll make sure I save it in the right format at a smaller bit rate. Because uh, it doesn't need to be at the full bit rate, which means it's a larger file. And... Um, and that way they can see a rough idea of what I'm talking about. Hey, Mike, uh, I, I hate to do this yeah. to you, but could you explain bitrate real quick so for people oh, that right. don't know? Uh, when you put together a file uh, with all the stuff in it, it has weight. And when you export it or share it, again, in the Mac world, uh, we like to share. Camtasia shares. Uh, you share it, uh, it, has, it has a weight to it. So if you change the bitrate, then it will share less of the file. So it's not maybe as clear, the audio is not as crisp, uh, and that has less weight to it. So that way it could be sent. Uh, it's easier to upload, easier to download, easier to share. Uh, mm -hmm. Good case in point is a WAV file compared to an MP3. Uh, a WAV file may be a song like maybe 30 megabytes. But mm -hmm. when you condense it down to an MP3, it's three. It's a 10 to 1 ratio. I'm geeking out. I'm an audio engineer. It's what I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so it's just less less files, uh, three megabytes compared to 30 megabytes. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when you're sharing, so is there, you were saying that OneDrive was was basically the uh, the platform that Aristocrat is using. Is that primary where you share it from? Do you like export it out to a OneDrive folder and say, hey, um, you know, stakeholder here, check out this file. Here's, here's, here's the first draft, take a look. Yes, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll either send them directly from OneDrive uh, or I will create a, a link and then put it into an email where it says, this is the first draft, uh, general idea, you know, love your feedback, we can change anything. You know, I really, you know, I have a question about this. Um, there was one question I, I was doing a, a uh, what was it? I should know what it is. I spent weeks on it, but uh, they wanted to know it was for scientists. And so the word data came up and is it data or data? So I asked, I had to actually ask the question, is it data or data? And it was data. Uh, I was thinking data. I'm not a scientist. What do I know? But they all said, no, no, it's data. It's never data. Oh, okay. It's data. So when I did the voiceover, I, I gladly, I asked beforehand, or I would have done all this voiceover and said data or data, whatever the wrong one. And, uh, it would have been, yeah. So any of those types of questions I like to ask then as I'm doing the first draft, is there anything weird that I miss misspelled or miss, uh, misspoken? Uh, so feedback is always, always amazing. Totally. Yeah. I, I thought it was data because I think of like Jean Luc yeah. Picard. Yes, you know, data, the Star Trek character. That's how I remembered it. Thank you. Exactly. I'm like, I'm not going to remember this. Nerd. Uh -oh. Nerd. <laughs> right. You know, I want to read out a couple of um, some posts in chat because this is great for people that are listening to the podcast. But um, Rick is saying, I do the background music in Premiere Pro as the essential sound window allows you to automate the ducking of the music beneath the narration tracks. Very cool feature. Mm, yep. That's interesting. That's great. Um, Megan is also saying, I recommend saving all the other media and assets you put in your Camtasia project in your main project folder too, in its own folder. Then if you do need to pack up your project and hand it off, new person has everything they need handy. Good labeling makes a big difference on visual assets as well. Yeah, definitely. And that's important. Um, and I love that you brought that up. I was going to uh, uh, that 
Camtasia is awesome at that. When you save the project, all the files go in there because we know that we're pulling from here, pulling from here, and we're throwing it together. When we share it, we want to save all those files so the next person can open it. Adobe is great at that. I mean, uh, Camtasia is great at that. Adobe is not. So if you're working in Premiere, you actually have to go under Project Manager and make sure you save all your files together. Because if I move over to another computer, it's going to be looking for that image in my photo folder that I dragged over there. Um, and that was a really big thing when I taught college was to, that to get through the students that uh, uh, Pro Tools does the same thing. Uh, it scatters it, and you have to reformat the folder. Uh, that they would lose their full, lose their sessions because they were working on this computer, and then they went over to this computer, and they're, oh, I can't find my folder, can't find my session, can't find my tracks. I was like, well, did you package it? And wow. so that was a big thing. Anything with Adobe or Pro Tools for all my audio peeps out there. Um, yeah. So packaging, but Camtasia automatically does it, and it's awesome. That's great. That's great. Yeah, Camtasia is just, I don't know. I love it. Even yeah. though it does crash my iMac every once in a while. <laughs> Mostly I do, what I need to do is shut down Chrome and then it works. But then yeah. if I'm trying to bounce anything. Anyway, Thomas is asking, do you tend to work with everything locally stored or from a remote server? We sort of talked about this earlier, but a remote server is ideal for those projects with more than one editor. Yes. Um, I have worked with remote servers before uh, in the past. Um, currently it's mostly local and I do tend to run, especially on my Mac, I do actually save everything and run it off a lacy drive. Um, so it just, it automatically saves and you can set up sometimes uh, dual, dual saving. So it'll, I'm running it off my lacy drive, but it will save it over here or running off my computer and it will save it to the lacy drive. Uh, so that way if the computer crashes and burns, everything is saved to the lacy drive. Nice. Nice. Yeah. But okay. great. Good, good one. Excellent. Okay. So Got it. You know, we've got the project going. You're sort of sent it out to collaborators. Now they have some changes that they want to make. How do you deal with that? They send you some emails and say, hey, we don't like the way that this arrow is pointing or something. And you've got to you've got to make some changes. How do you work through that process? I say I'm right. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> right. We all say that, at least in our head. Um, but <laughs> um, so if they're, they're making changes, I like and I will put in the initial email please put the time code of where you want the changes. Because ah. they'll, they'll say, like, oh, I didn't like that arrow. And then I have to go back, okay, great. I have 23 of them. Which one would, did you talk about? Um, so I'm always, all right, please put the time code of any changes that, you, that are necessary. Mm -hmm. And so if they put the time code down, and a lot of people you know, are getting onto my ways here, um, which is, makes it so much easier to edit. And I just recently did that with a video. I uh, took six hours of footage and condensed it down to a seven minute video. And they're like, all right, this is great, but we need to make changes here, 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 here. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and then you just kind of, since I use so many platforms, I guess it's my curse that I'm just not doing it all in Camtasia, um, that I have to go back and go, okay, what did I do that one in? What did I do that one in? So then I have to go back and I'll make notes. I print everything off, scan everything, make notes right on the email, uh, upload it to the folder so I know what I'm talking, you know, for references. And then I plan everything. I re-storyboard. Okay, how am I going to restory or redo the edits? And so I'll re-storyboard. Okay, I need to do another voiceover for this. This is in Beyond. Uh, this is over here. Uh, okay, I got to redo this and then throw it back into Camtasia. And uh, yeah. So I, I re basically restoryboard the whole thing again. Wow. Okay. So like, all right. How am I going to make these changes? Do I have to reshoot it? Um, you know, what 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 process? Because they don't. You know, you know, most people don't care about the process. They just like want it done. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's our job to go. Okay. Well, what do I need to do? And no. so I restoryboard it. I, I do really like that tip of just asking the time code, just like yeah. making sure you get it specifically so, th so that they have to focus too on like, okay, so what exactly am I asking it to do? Right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. So, and you make the changes, save it again or export the project or, or whatever, like bounce it so that you can go share it out. And now the project is approved, right? And then, so what happens from there? From there, I will figure out what platform it's going to go on. Mm -hmm. And am I uploading it to an LMS? Am I uploading it to, say, a, a Vimeo uh, or a YouTube site? Am I putting it on a website? 
And one thing I learned being in the business for so long is what type of file is needed. So you always want to know, do I need, do I need to do uh, the best you know, bit rate, the highest bit rate for this? Uh, will it even accept it? Um, we use a platform called Panopto. And it only takes up to 720. So I don't need to export it at a 1080. I can export it at a 720, which will give it a better resolution going into a 720 platform. Mm -hmm. um, or otherwise, the platform will condense it from a 1080 down to a 720. And that will take away some of the quality of the video. So yeah. I always uh, always like to know, you know what, what, where it's going to go. Yeah. And so when we're talking about resolution, we're talking about video resolution. Correct. Correct. And Panopto is a delivery platform, right? Correct. Correct. Um, it's it's like a Vimeo. Um, right. You can add. Uh, the cool thing is you can add chapter markings, really neat and and stuff. But it is a it's a it's a well organized Vimeo. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mark is saying here we were looking at Panop Panopto as a video solution. Yeah. They were we'll using, talk, Mark. Hit me they're up. Using iCove <laughs> currently, but yeah, it's just sort of. I mean, you know, like YouTube is a, is a delivery mechanism as well. So it's that yeah. type of. Yeah, it's a, it's a good platform. And Mark, if you do go with it, let me know. I'll, I'll show you some tricks that they don't even know of. Um, so I've been asking Panopto for uh, to fix something for me, and they can't know, don't know how to do it. So I figure out how to do it. Uh, ah, so work around. Me work around. Me up, man. Hit me up. Love it. Love it. All right. So you've got it on the platform. Now I'm just going to just throw this at you. Please. They You have it on there, and then all of a sudden they decide that they want another change in it. What's that like? So I go back to my folder, which again, uh, now that I have to do a second change, I will make another another subfolder of second changes, and I will save everything off as second take um, or second edit. And so I go back. I have all my files. I have my notes of what happened, so they can approve it and then come back and say, "All right, this is changed now. We we want to say data instead of data." Um, and so I have everything right there. So I go back in, I create a third file, a subfolder, move everything over, uh, and then kind of re-storyboard it. Like, all right, what changes do you need? And then go through the same process as I would for the second one, is you know what, what needs to be done. Um, like I have a project that just that's coming up that has to be a complete reshoot. Um, they did it, they liked it, I liked it. Then they decided they didn't like it. And uh, now I have to reshoot it. And so now it's, and we have to change X, Y, and Z. So I'm like, okay, let's rethink it now. And uh, so again, back to the notes, back to the footage um, and, uh, and the reorganization and kind of like starting over for a whole new project. Just curious, as far as your training videos are concerned, like what, what typically are you creating or what, what type of content is it? We, I create a lot of, of variety, which is great. I, that's, I guess that's keeps me, keeps me awake. Um, is one day I'm creating a, a, we, a safety video for the new thermal, uh, I guess, uh, thermometers that you walk into and it takes your temperature. So I did that for safety and now I'm doing training for, uh, one of our new, uh, slot machines that is coming out and relating it to the other ones, uh, comparison, similarities, differences. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do a, another video um, on, uh, on setting up a sign. Uh, the six hour down to seven minute footage is all about uh, erecting a new sign that we have and the safety precautions that go with it. Uh, so it's each one is a little bit different. The process is the same. I know what I'm going to do once I storyboard. I know how I'm going to do my uh, label everything, keep everything organized uh, because I've been just doing it for so long. Uh, but it, it helps to have a process in line and templates. And, you know, when I'm doing voiceovers, I'm, I'm using my, uh, you know, good mic. And I, I already have my settings set in uh, Audition. So I just, you know, it, it gets quicker and quicker. I'm, um, you know, and I, this is a little bit outside of the scope of what the, yeah. the topic is specifically, but I am curious, how often do you have to work with actors or talent? Um, I, I do. Uh, I do work with uh, my, my, some of my SMEs are, uh, are my actors uh -huh. and uh, they, I have to direct them, uh, which is kind of funny. Uh, I'm always, you know, okay, quiet on the set. Uh, I have to get a clapper. Though. I have a mean to get a clapper, <laughs> um, but I do clap for the, for the marking um, that's to help line up footage from different cameras. Cause I'll sometimes use like three or four cameras. Mm -hmm. And 
Uh, yeah, so they're they're interesting to work with. Uh, I have to make sure the lighting is perfect. So you, when you do, you, and as you know, everyone on the line here is is you know you are your own producer, so you have to uh, keep in mind you know doing shots in the studio uh, or the training room. There's slot machines and there's a window, and you know there's going to be a glare somewhere. So uh, I rigged up this curtain system because uh, I'm old curtain. So I like and makeup and stuff. So uh, it's it's all it's all good. Um, but yeah, I've worked with actors uh, over the years. Yeah. If you yeah. if you give them direction, and uh, and a positive and negative co and constructive comments and a positive spin, you're yeah. gonna have a great day. Um, okay. Yeah. That's good to know. Right on. Um, now I'm gonna sort of like. I want to talk a little bit about you using so many different platforms for producing this stuff and just keeping yourself organized that way. I, I just love the fact that, you know, that you kind of put everything together using like say audacity or pro tools and then with premiere pro, and then you dump all of that over or, move it over to Camtasia to do sort of like the finishing work with animations and stuff. Can you, how do you keep yourself organized with all those platforms? I mean, when you're creating your directories and stuff, is that, um, do you say like, okay, these are pro audit, I mean, uh, pro tools files or how, how do you keep yourself organized that way? Yeah, I do. I do label my projects um, beyond, um, you know, pro tools, premiere, audition, you know, they have the subfolders and everything, Camtasia. Um, so I'm always labeling the file because if you save a file from Camtasia, it just has whatever you named it. So I always, and I put that in a subfolder just so I can, I know where my Camtasia folders are because it doesn't look like a Camtasia folder unless you name it a Camtasia folder. Yeah. Uh, it just looks like everything else. Uh, so I'm really big on naming the folders uh, mm -hmm. and then putting them into a subfolder so I know where they all are. And yeah. sometimes I'll do, I'll put them in different places. And this is why my hard drive and files get so large is, is I'll take the Camtasia folder, I'll put it in Camtasia, but I'll also put it in take two and uh, I'll copy it over there. So I have it in both. Mm -hmm. uh, so I like, again, I like backups of the backups uh, just in case one of them gets corrupt. Um, another tip is, and I've been running into this with, Premiere or Adobe and Camtasia is the uh, file versions or the software versions. Um, mm -hmm. Do not get rid of outdated file versions because sometimes file versions like uh, the last last media encoder one I didn't like, but three ones ago I did because it converted MOV files, which is a Mac, into an MP4 file. Um, but the new ones won't. And so it's it changes. Sometimes I like the old systems. So I'd never get rid of or delete an old system like Camtasia. If you create it in 2018, it will open in 2019, but you should be using 2018. Um, so it's, you never, I, I have, I've been, have issues with that sometimes. Nice. Okay. So wait, let me, let me just clarify that. So like with media encoder, which yes. is like, are we talking the Adobe? Adobe um, media encoder, which will convert different files into different files, um, right, or different right. file sizes or whatever. Yes. How do you save the old ones? I, I don't even know how to do that. Um, there, there's ways. Um, <laughs> there's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, another great example is I love lo I love logic. I'm a, like I said, I'm a Mac guy. Um, yeah. And uh, I started video editing on Final Cut, but I do not like Final Cut 10. Final Cut 7 rocks. Um, even Pro Tools 6 outdoes Pro Tools 10 or 11 or 12, whatever we're on. Um, and so I have those older versions that I will work in. Um, even in, uh, I have a very old version of GarageBand which I still use to this date because it has so many awesome plugins and effects that they got rid of when they updated them. So I always save different versions of different softwares. Wow. Okay. So I, always, I always have tricks that other people don't because I save software. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, like Tom is saying, don't let Adobe hear you say that about me. Yeah, it's all right. They know. They know. Moodist here is saying, they I have know. a Camtasia comment. No, it's true. I mean, um, just having been involved in, 
especially with audio production for so long, it's like, oh man, you know, I used to use a lot of well, GarageBand and then like Line Six stuff, and yeah, now, Line 6, yeah. all the old Line Six stuff I have is just completely useless because it's all been updated and nothing yeah. is compatible with my iMac and just you know all this ridiculous stuff and. Yeah. Um, you just move on and look for something else. It's like, I don't want to deal with it. There's so All much right. great stuff out there. There's so much great stuff, whether you want to spend money or it's for free. Um, yeah. You know, there's so much great stuff. So, um, so you just keep everything you create these subdirectories and name specifically like the platform that you're using, like Correct. beyond or pro tools or premiere and, and, and you've got that all organized in there. Um, now let's talk about, um, I want to, I'm just curious about your hardware resources. Like for somebody that might be in chat or listening to this, like how, you know, if you're, you're actually working with all of this, uh, all of this media, how, 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 how beefy should your computer be? Or like, what do you actually need to be able to pull this kind of stuff off? It, it helps, uh, to have a, a big computer. Like I, um, Camtasia, and audacity do not use much cpu so that you're you're doing pretty well uh, unless you start going into multiple files of camtasia um and again as you mentioned sometimes it works better on a pc than a mac uh i get that um still people are <laughs> mac mac savvy um yeah. but once you get up to the adobe's and the premieres and you know uh, the, the pro tools i mean um it, it gets just the hardware just to load it takes uh, a lot of files. Um, I know Logic, because if anyone's a Mac user and uses Logic, which is uh, an audio program, um, it's 14 gigabytes just to load it uh, because there's so many tools in there and Premiere is a lot to load it. Uh, mm -hmm. So that alone will put a big strain on your computer. But there's, there's ways around it when you're working in it to, to turn things off uh, so your computer does run better. Uh, but it's it's always the it's always the curse in the media world is software gets bigger, but the computer stays the same because you can't afford to upgrade it. Uh, yeah. So that's why a lot of people do use older versions of software because they just can't update the computer all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Graphics card is important. Yes. Yeah, Mudasir is saying you know he's hashtagging a gaming laptop, and yeah. Mark Brown is saying make sure you have a good graphics card. Now, yeah. how about with your external drives? Um, just a little bit on you know connectivity you know usb2 usb3 thunderbolt like what do you yeah. i use uh I, on my mac i use thunderbolt um mm -hmm. it is uh 10 times faster than anything and it's and that's why i run platforms right off my thunderbolt because it is so fast okay. so i'm not using my cpu memory or anything which again frees up the cpu for uh the tasks i need it to do but i i run it off a of thunderbolt and i guess that's again an advantage of having a, a mac um, is and, that you do have that option. And so that's something that you do all the time. You, you actually run, um, run stuff off of an external drive on a regular basis. Yes. If it's a Thunderbolt connection. If it's a Thunderbolt connection. If I move over to my PC, I'm like, all right, I can only do so much. Um, yeah. because it will freeze or I have, I do have a giant fan underneath my uh, laptop, uh, cause it gets hot cause the fan kicks in and trying to do all the CPU usage. Um, yeah. I have a bigger Mac, um, and so I, I do a lot of work over there and I run it off a of Thunderbolt and I daisy chain my Thunderbolts. I have a Lacey drive. Uh, if anyone knows about the orange Lacey drives, yeah. uh, you can, you can daisy chain them. And uh, so it, yeah, you have more memory. Um, the new Dell PC. Oh, cool. Excellent. I didn't know that, Rick. Excellent. Thank you. Either. I'm like, what? Ah. So yeah, I haven't <laughs> bought a PC in a while, so I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah. And that's so awesome. And just for you guys, so that you guys know what we're talking about here is just the speed at which like your drives are connected to your computer makes a real difference. Like when you're trying to, um, when you're trying to produce something and working with it um, on your computer, if you're using an external drive to house all of the files, you want it, you want a really, really fast connection to that external drive. And so Thunderbolt is really fast. I know USB three is fast. Uh, you know, I, I don't have, don't have any experience with, you know, connecting something via, via USB three and working with it um, over that connection. But I know that that Thunder Thunderbolt works really well. Um, Rick is saying I connect to a G speed raid using the Thunderbolt connection. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. Really I mean, USB three is fast, um, but Thunder, I don't, Sometimes it has that lag if you're moving a lot of files and 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 that kind of stuff. Um, but 
Thunderbolt is eight terabyte. Nice. All right. So yeah. speaking of a uh, raid system, let's talk about um, how you do your backups. Backups, um, again, all on uh, hard drives. I'll back up the backup on a hard drive. I'll put it on the cloud uh, for storage. And again, I, I like the cloud, but sometimes I don't have good internet connection, especially nowadays when everyone's on in school and and more of the more of it's being used and it's slower at certain times. I, I can't I can't afford to wait to download a you know a 16 gigabyte file or something. Uh, I may grab an audio file or something from it and rebuild it, uh, but I, I like to have everything on hard drives. Um, I use the like I said, I use the cloud for backup or sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you do you have like um, a particular process for backing everything up? I know you're saying you have your Lacy drives. Um, we've got Lacy drives all over the place here. My wife does anyway, so um, I know that those are kind of like industry standard on, on the music side. Yeah, um, SSD is awesome. Uh, single step. Yep. Uh, so thanks, thank you, Rick. Um, yeah, I back. I, I basically I just drag and drop the folder. Um, yeah. If I'm working on it and. I back it up multiple times during the session. Mm -hmm. So every time I take a break, I'll throw it over there. And then next time, okay, a couple hours later, I'll throw it back again because I just, I've, I've lost files. I've lost projects. I've lost, uh, and I know we all have. Um, I was at an instructor once uh, and we had a student doing her portfolio and she lost everything. She didn't back it up. Oh. And she lost four years of work. Um, it was it was horrifying, and so mm -hmm. she had to redo it all because we didn't want, wouldn't let her graduate. Um, you have to redo it. Uh, so I understand, and and I, I know everyone on the line has gone through that. So <laughs> no, big, I was actually I was going to ask you. I am uh, paranoid. Paranoid. I was going to ask you what your biggest disaster was, but then I'm like, no, that's just a bad question. <laughs> oh man, I I I was I I had a I, I was a music teacher in Massachusetts, an audio teacher, and we had one of the we had a record company. We were the only student-run record company in the country, and we're in the, we're in the studio uh, teaching my students and stuff. And one of my students was setting up the the tracks, and we had like 32 tracks, I believe. We we're using uh, Pro Tools, and uh, so I go out. I'm talking to the manager or whatever. Then I come back. He's like, um, "I can't find the files." It's like, "What do you mean you can't find the files? Did you back them up?" Um, I can't find the files. I'm like, oh, come on. Um, first, I found them. They were in the trash. I don't know how they got there. Uh, but luckily, I went in and kind of found. I was shocked they were in the trash. So we had to rebuild the entire session, which took two hours. Yeah. And uh, But at least we didn't, you know, at least it wasn't a day. Um, but, yeah, so I'm like, dude, you kind of backed this up. It's like, yeah, like, <laughs> you're killing me. <laughs> it's just like the, you know, anxiety hearing of the portfolio store. But even for me right now, I'm like, okay. Calm down. Just I mean, I, I've lost right. folders. I mean, I've lost files before, and just I went to the you know, you just go to the band. No, I didn't like that take. Let's do it again, because uh, they don't know I lost it. Um, yeah. But you know, yeah. <laughs> All right. No, this has been good, and you know, I know this is totally. This is definitely like one of the geekier episodes that I think that we've done on TLDC. Like it. So um, it's been a lot of fun, but I, I want to go ahead and start wrapping things up. Um, anything else you can add, like any tips or tricks that you might have as far as workflow? And, and I mean, it sounds like you have a lot. You're going to, you can share with Mark Brown, your stuff about Panopto, but um, any, any, anything off the top of your head that you can think of. Make sure your auto save is every five, uh, every three to five minutes. At least it will auto save your last three to five minutes. <laughs> nice. All right. So, um, you got any any uh, any any music out there that you want to share for with everybody so they can listen to uh, to the quality of your audio? Absolutely. Um, you can go on to YouTube. I can drop a link in there. That uh, under Mike Peacock, I have three songs out right now. Um, one of them is uh, I think it's being picked up for NASCAR. Uh, it's called One Family Strong. Um. It's it was written years ago after the 111, uh, but kind of modified over the time. So it's kind of changed. It's kind of neat. Uh, let's see, I have another song called "Didn't Say Goodbye," and a Christmas song called uh, "Christmas Smile," which I wrote uh, for my wife. Awesome. Um, yeah, so they're they're on YouTube. What's their own? Um, so I, I I do country. I don't know why. I grew up country. I think so. <laughs> uh, I'm a rock blues fan 
huge Van Halen fan. Miss you, Eddie. Um, but I write country. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, drop those in there. Let's hear them. Um, okay, well, I think I'm going to wrap things up. You know what? Hey, Christiana, if you want to hear, um, so I did, uh, that producer I was talking about, his name is Bob Daspit. Absolutely amazing guy. Um, speaking of Van Halen, he actually, um, I don't know, Usually don't talk about this stuff, but he he worked with Eddie Van Halen um, for a couple of years regularly, and he actually has a keyboard part um, on the during the Sammy Hagar days. A very I can't even remember what song it is, but it's actually him playing keyboard um, on it. But uh, I'll drop in my band camp, and you guys, if I don't ever do this, but if you guys want to listen to the music that nice. I like, and yeah, here is um, here is Luis Malbus's music. And it's uh, it's more. This is my singer songwriter stuff. I used to be more on the uh, uh, years and years. I played in punk and sort of like rock bands, but that was my singer songwriter stuff. I did a few years ago. But you can hear um, Bob Daspit on there. He actually plays the lead guitar on the third song, and he's amazing. He was like Hans Zimmer's right hand man, and he actually lives just a few miles away from me. And that's how I hooked up with him. And we just had a great. Oh, that's time. great. What's that? That's great. Oh yeah. <laughs> So, you know, if you guys want to give it a listen, check it out. And um, that's it. I think uh, we're going to just wrap it up. Mike, thanks so much. I think that I actually want to geek out with you again at some point. So I'll probably hit you up and we'll we'll figure something else to talk about. Um, thanks, you guys. I hope this is helpful. And um, yeah, tomorrow we've got Alan Nottichu. We're talking about chroma key or green screening in PowerPoint, which is like, what the heck is that about? So um um, join us tomorrow morning. And with that, thanks again, Mike, and we'll see you guys later. Bye y'all. Thank you.